Well, a pleasant morning to each of you. It would be unkind of my part if I didn't take just a moment of time to express my appreciation for you tuning in so that we can study the Word of God together, encourage one another, and build one another up in the most holy faith. We recognize that many cannot be in the assembly due to COVID-19 and health risks, and yet we long forward to and look forward to the day that we can all be together without the fear of the virus. We're mindful of some who are sick and mindful of some who are grieving. You're in our thoughts and in our prayers. And if there be anyone who has a spiritual need, we want you to know that we're here for you. If you'll contact one of the elders, Brother Guy or myself, we'd be glad to assist you in any way possible to help you get your life right with God Almighty. And we'd also like to welcome and invite our visitors to come and be with us at any opportunity you may have. We'd always enjoy having visitors at the Old Neal Church. If you take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy and the 33rd chapter, you'll remember that God had selected a man identified as Moses to lead the people of God out of captivity of Egypt to the land of promised Canaan. But when you come to Deuteronomy 33, Moses is about to die. And he's gathered together all the tribes of Israel, and he's going to pronounce a blessing upon them. And when you look in verses 24 and verses 25, he is speaking to the tribe of Asher. And notice that at this time, Moses speaks to the fact that they would be happy and prosper. But look, if you will, at the latter part of verse 25. When you look at the latter part of verse 25, you will find a great statement made by that man Moses. Notice the words, as your days, so shall your strength be. If you have your Bible, underscore that sentence. I want us to understand that that is a very important sentence. That there are many lessons we can learn from that one sentence alone. The first thing I want to do is to stop and look at the kind of days we can have. Notice he said, as your days. And you know there are many different kinds of days an individual can have. First of all, one can have days of plenty and days of want. You know you can go through the Bible and find many saints of God who teach that, but especially we find this teaching in the life of the beloved Apostle Paul. Open your Bible, if you will, to the Philippian letter and the fourth chapter. And when you come to the Philippian letter and the fourth chapter, the Apostle Paul is in a Roman prison. And notice what this man of God has to say to the church at Philippi. Notice carefully verse 11 and verse 12. He said, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now let's just stop for a moment. Notice Paul said, contentment is not something that just comes naturally. But Paul said, I learned it. And here is a man who said he learned contentment no matter what state he may be in. And then notice verse 12. He says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. In other words, I know to have very little and I know what it's like to prosper. He said, everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Here is a man who's telling us that in life there will be days of plenty and there will be days of want. And I'm sure that many of us can attest to that fact. One thing I believe we need to teach our young men and young ladies is that when they start out, they're not going to have everything mama and daddy has. What took mama and daddy years and years to obtain, you're not going to have in your first year of life upon your own. And many times we need to learn that there will be days of plenty and there will be days of want. Local churches need to learn that lesson. That sometimes there will be days of growth and zeal and there will be days that it seems like the church is on fire for the Lord. And then there will be days of setbacks. And so thus much I know I know that there will be days of plenty in life, and there will be days of want. But secondly, I learned there will be uh, days of, of health and days of sickness. You know, sometimes I wonder if we understand that health is not given to everybody. 
Sometimes I'm fearful we take for granted our health until we lose it. If you take your Bible, look, if you will, in 3 John and verse 2. And when you come to 3 John and verse 2, you'll find a man identified as Gaius. Now, what do you know about that man, Gaius? You may say, well, I know John was writing to him. That's exactly right. But you'll remember that John talked to him in a way that it makes it sound like Gaius was physically sick, but he was prospering spiritually. John said, I would that you would prosper in your health like you do in your spiritual life. And you know one thing I can put down is it would be better to be spiritually healthy and physically sick rather than be physically healthy and spiritually sick. But here was a man who was not healthy. And sometimes I'm fearful that in life we do not appreciate our health. Sometimes we take it for granted. But you know, my friend, there'll be days where you may have good health, but there can come days when your health is gone. You remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 when he had that thorn in the flesh? Whatever that thorn was, Paul prayed for it to be removed, and it was not removed. And Paul said that God told him his grace was sufficient. And Paul said, in my weakness, God will be glorified. Now, I'll tell you one thing I know. I know this much. There can be days of health and there can be days of sickness. There can be some people that have never really known a healthy day. And there are some people that merely don't know a sick day. But one thing you can put down whatever day you face, that it will come in life. But there's a third thing I want to put into our heart. There will be days of joy and days of sadness in the home. There will be great days where the family gets along and they love one another and they appreciate one another. And some days it just seems like everything goes right. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's enjoying with one another and laughing with one another. And then there are some days it seems like everybody's in a sour mood. It seems like everyone stopped by the persimmon tree on the way to the breakfast table and everybody's just sold up. But have you ever thought that in life there can be some sad days when children are unfaithful and they leave the home? In Luke 15, have you ever thought of the heart of that father when his son went out into the far country and lived in the filth of sin? And I'll tell you, my friend, there can be days of joy when you see your child baptized into Christ. There's days of joy when your spouse is growing spiritually and you're growing spiritually, but then there can be days of sorrow when spiritually you're downtrodden. Or when there's problems in the home life. Oh, I would, I can tell us to understand there'll be many days of joy and many days of tears. Your home, my home. But that brings up another thought. There's days of spiritual joy and there's days where your soul will be conflicted. Have you ever thought that in life there are days that you can just rejoice? Have you ever thought that there are days that there's joy in serving God, joy in worshiping God? But then there are certain days where it just seems like life is a struggle and spiritually we're struggling. You know, I believe that you'll find in the Bible men face that great problem. Some days they seem to just have great faith and then there are other days that they were struggling just to get by. And one thing we need to learn in life is there are days of great joy spiritually, and then there will be days where we're conflicted spiritually. But that brings up something else in our study. There will be days of death where we have to bury a load. Have you ever thought about the pain there is in death, the loneliness of leaving the graveyard? Oh, I would that I could get people to understand the pain that is involved. And sometimes we act like we ought not to have pain. But I'll tell you what Paul said. Paul said we saw not as those who have no hope. He didn't say we didn't saw in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. He said we saw, but not as the world. The world doesn't have any hope of their loved one being saved. He said, but as children of God, we still saw because there's a hole in our lives that will never be filled again. Have you ever thought about what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 9.27 when he said it's appointed for man to die and then the judgment? Have you ever thought about what Job said in Job 14 and verse 1 when he said man who is born of woman is few of days and full of trouble? 
one thing you can put down is that there will happen in my life and in your life a day we experience the death of someone who's so near and dear to our heart. But that brings up a second thought of our study. We see as our days. But have you ever thought about our strength? Where do we find strength for the days? And I want us to understand we can find strength to endure the days of heartache. Open your Bible to the Philippian letter and the fourth chapter. And when you come to the Philippian letter and the fourth chapter, the Apostle Paul tells us in verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, I like that statement. Have you ever thought that God will give us the strength? God will provide. Now the question may arise, how will God supply me with strength? First of all, through prayer. Oh, I would that I could get in the hearts of brethren the importance of prayer. Sometimes I think that's the neglected subject. In the 121st Psalm in verse 1, you remember that the people, as they would go back to Jerusalem, they said that, they lift up mine eyes to the hills, from which comes my help. And they said, our help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the other side. In the Hebrew letter and the fourth chapter, you remember that the Hebrew writer is talking about having a great high priest in Christ Jesus. Then he makes a statement in verse 16. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And I need strength. I go to my God in prayer. And my God shall supply my every need. In my days of want, in my days of heartache, in my days of sorrow, in my days of trouble, God, where are you? God said, I'm with you. Secondly, I get strength from reading God's Word. Take your Bible and look in the 119th Psalm. And if you will, look at verse 71. In verse 71, he said, It is good for me that I've been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. You know, my friend, what is important is that we know the Word of God. This is the help from the other side of life. And it's a shame that so few know the Word of God. Sometimes we look to secular people to give us comfort. Sometimes we go to the television and find what someone on television says. I'll tell you where you find comfort. I'll tell you where you find strength is in the Word of God. As your days, so shall your strength be if you are listening to God's Word. God's Word gives us the strength. But that brings up something else. Help from breath. Oh, have you ever thought about brethren? Our brothers and sisters in Christ can lift us up and they can strengthen us when our hands are weak and our knees are feeble. When life is troubled, our brethren can give us that which we need. Paul said in Galatians 6.2 that we need to bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. In Romans 12 it said, Weep with those that weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Our brethren can strengthen us. As our days, so shall our strength be. We get strength from prayer. We get strength from God's Word. We get strength from our brethren. But I'll tell you something else. We get help from the Holy Spirit. Now, do not misunderstand me nor misrepresent me. I'm not saying in some miraculous way, but let's look at what God's Word says. Take your Bible and look in the Roman letter and the 8th chapter. And look at what the Bible says in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps, underscore helps. When does He help? In our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Oh, I like that. Some people may dispute that, but I'll tell you, my friend, when I read my Bible, I believe the Holy Spirit and Christ both intercede because if you drop down, notice what the Bible says about Jesus. Jesus also intercedes for us, and as does the Holy Spirit. Look at what the Bible says in the Roman letter and the 8th chapter. 
And notice that the Bible says in verse 34, Who is he who condemns us? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. I believe the Holy Spirit and Christ both intercede for us. And that is help in time of need. But I'll tell you something else. As you have your Bible open to the Roman letter in the 8th chapter, look, if you will, just a few verses later in verse 28, to know that all things work together for good. Look at what he said. And we know. What is it we know? We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Do you know what gives me strength? To know that God will work it all to good in the end. But then I want you to think of one other thing. That God is interested in me. I want you to think about it in 1 Peter 5, 7. Peter said, cast your cares on the Lord. He cares for you. And when I understand that God is there, God cares. When I come to the end of my life, that God is there with me. He is the one who will help me through the valley of the shadow of death. I understand this much. As my days, so shall my strength be. Because my strength is not in a man, but in God. As long as I put my faith in God, I'll have the strength to face every kind of day there is. As your days shall be, so shall your strength be. Oh, may God help us learn that lesson. Let us pray. Our Father, we're so thankful for the blessings of life. We're so thankful as our days be, so shall our strength. And that as your children, you'll give us the strength to endure no matter what we face. And Father, may we always run the race with endurance, looking to the author and finisher of our faith, your son Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him was willing to go to the cross and was willing to die so that we could have hope of eternal life. Father, may each day we face, we know you give us the strength to supply our every need. And Father, May we continue in this life to give you glory until we go home. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.